はい、えー、皆さんこんにちは、えー、米国特許セミナー、えー、パテントターミノロジーです、えー、このシリーズでは、えー、特許用語表現などをできるできるだけわかりやすく解説しています、えー、講師は米国特許弁護士であるブライアンエプスタインさんです、えー、今回は、えー、コンプライズインクルードハブの違い、えー、そしてコンフィギュアルアレンジドアダプテッドの違いについて見ていきたいと思いますえー、では、えー、まず、コンプライズ、インクルード、ハブについてです。えーまあ、これらは、えー、有するであるとか、えー、備えるの役として使用されることが多いんですが、えー、これらの違いについて、ブライアンさんにご解説いただきます。えー、so, ブライアンさん、有する or have、備える is typically translated as comprise, include or have. Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah,、um, so, You know, these terms basically all have the same meaning,、um, but they can have different roles in claims. And so, you know, when we select one of these terms,、um, that's kind of why we would choose one over the other, is based on what role we expect the、uh, phrase to have. So, in particular, MPEP、uh, 2111.03. Discusses tr、uh, transitional phrases like comprising and consisting of. And so,、uh, obviously, we're focusing on comprising here. And the MPEP specifically calls out the word including as synonymous with comprising.、Um, so, you know, again, right now in the explanation,、um, They're all about the same. You know, the MPEP doesn't mention the word having, but、um, you know, it has the same sort of meaning. The issue is that the words including and having are not customary transitional phrases.、Um, that doesn't mean they can't be transitional phrases,、um, but we want to create a distinction. For our transitional phrase and the other、um, translations of sonero in our claim.、Um, so the issue is that the transitional phrases demarcate the preamble. In other words, you know, you've got your claim, you've got your preamble, you've got a transitional phrase like comprising, and then you have your body of the claim. The transitional phrase demarcates, that is, ends or concludes the preamble. And so,、um, so, so that's one issue. And then the second part of that is that the preamble itself might not be limiting under MPEP 2111.02. And so we can create an issue here. So at the、um, midpoint of this slide, we have an example. So it has an apparatus, you know, A comprising feature B and a processor comprising feature C. So the question is, you know, what are the relative roles of the word comprising in this example? So, you know, probably what our applicant wants here is that this. That the comprising between A and B is our transitional phrase. And then, so A is in the preamble, and elements B and C are in the body of the claim. If this claim gets granted as is, and your patentee, the applicant, now the patentee, asserts this patent,、um, Your accused infringer might argue differently. They might say, no, the second comprising is the、um, transitional phrase. And so elements A and elements B are now in the preamble, and they should not be given patentable weight. And element C is、uh, the body of the claim. So, you know, and, and this would have to come up 
uh, you know, the, the issue would have to be resolved during litigation. Um, maybe our patentee here has the stronger argument, but, you know, you have to make the argument and you have to convince a jury and you have to spend time and money on attorneys to make that argument. It's a lot easier if we had just said, uh, replace the second comprising with the word including or having. And now, you know, again, of course, our accused infringer could make the same argument, but it's a little bit clearer, right? The word comprising is a traditional transitional phrase. Um, there's only one occurrence of it in the claim. It has this colon attached to it. Um, you know, it the, the issue is a lot easier for uh, for the eventual patentee to make. In addition, the situation can also be reversed, right? Sometimes an applicant might intend for the second comprising to be the transitional phrase. Um, you know, maybe it's not clear in this example, but certainly I've seen that where, you know, there's the, the preamble contains multiple, um, includes its own use of the word comprising, and then has a uh, transitional phrase of comprising afterwards. But to, to continue with this, that idea in this example, um, you know, maybe B is supposed to be part of the preamble. So what's the danger there, Brian? In this reverse situation, um, you know, maybe the uh, accused infringer makes the opposite argument, right? They might argue that B now should be part of the body, right? We want it to be part of the preamble. They now want it to be part of the body. Why would they do this? They might argue that they don't infringe this narrow patent, right? Now the patent has this additional feature of B. They want it in the body. Maybe they don't have that element in their product. And so they don't infringe. So it's going to be very fact specific, of course. But, you know, these are just the sorts of arguments that we want to avoid if possible. Um, you know, are infringers going to make whatever argument you know, best suits their position. Um, but it's best if they don't have these, you know, if we can uh, avoid these arguments. Um, the other thing to note is that um, colons often are used in transitional phrases, right? You can see in this example here that we have a colon following the first comprising, but not following the second comprising. Um, we can make this a similar argument about colons in the body of claims, right? Some um, attorneys like having, you know, like a unit comprising, you know, as part of the, bo the body of the claim, right? We have like a unit that comprises several other things, and then they put a colon there. Um, again, colons are traditionally used as part of the preamble. And so, again, your accused infringer might make arguments about where the you know where the preamble actually occurs um so the takeaway the advice um or you know when when translating this sort of thing is you know use the word comprising only once in the claim use a colon only once in the claim you know to the extent possible and just try to minimize these issues はいえー、では次に、えー、コンフィギュアード、アレンジド、アダプテッドについてです。えー、これらは、えー、構成されているに対応する英語表現なんですが、えー、これらの使い分けについて聞いてみたいと思います。So, Brian さん、えー、構成されている is typically translated as configured, arranged, or adapted. Would you share your thoughts?Sure.、Um, so, this is the second time now that we're discussing 構成されている。Um, And so, you know, the header or the title here isn't entirely clear.、Um, we're discussing phrases in the form of like configured to, arranged to, adapted to. So the issue here is that when examiners make obviousness rejections, they typically modify a primary reference in view of a secondary reference.、Um, and so, There is a、uh, line of logic or argument 
that suggests that the examiner's modification adapts the primary reference. Um, you know, it's it, it's so whereas we could make a an argument that uh, the proposed modification doesn't configure the that the secondary reference doesn't configure the primary reference um, as proposed by the examiner. It's more difficult to say that it does not adapt the primary reference because that's exactly what the hypothetical rejection is, right? The, the examiner's rejection is adapting it. And so we try not to use the word adapted because it's it comes across as a little too broad. It kind of opens itself up to an interpretation where the examiner um, is going to reject, you know, it, it makes it easy for the examiner to reject the claim as obvious. Um, a similar issue occurs with the phrase operable to, right? So the obviousness modification itself also makes the primary reference operable to perform additional functions, right? That's, again, what the purpose of modifying the primary reference is, is to make it operable. Um, it doesn't, however, change the state of the primary reference. And that, again, is the point of using the phrase configured to. Um, we haven't really talked about the phrase arranged to. We don't really see arranged to that frequently. Um, I probably wouldn't use it. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just not, you know, particularly standard. Um, I mean, I can make arguments that it, that it has issues, but, um, you know, I, I think the bigger issue is just that we're not used to seeing it. I've also seen phrases like constructed to, um, you know, I, I think configured is probably uh, suitable for most uses for, um, you know, electronic or electric um, elements, uh, particularly at the point of novelty, like a processor, you know, that performs some sort of novel um, or inventive um, function. Um, but, you know, again, we talked about this before and there, in our previous discussion, we mentioned uh, 35 USC 112 F, you know, means plus function MPF, um, back in patent terminology session one. So, you know, again, we don't want to get into this habit of claiming everything as configured to, um, you know, particularly with regards to something structural, um, like, you know, beams of a struct, you know, of a building or like, you know, um, of an airplane wing or, you know, something that's really mechanical. Uh, maybe then the word arranged to or the phrase arranged to makes more sense. Uh, we probably wouldn't claim that as configured to usually. Um, so the, again, so the, the distinction would be that, you know, not to use the phrase adapted to, probably don't use the phrase operable to, um, use configured in electric or electronic um, inventions or elements. And then maybe you can use arranged for, you know, mechanical uh, structures. はいえー、ブライアンさんありがとうございました、えー、前半で見ました、えー、コンプライジングによってプリアンブルの領域が変わりうるということを示した例ですねこれが非常に面白かったのではないかと思います、はいえー、では今回はこれで以上になりますご質問や扱ってほしいトピックなどがありましたら YouTube のコメント欄に書いていただくかスライド最後に記載のメールアドレスまでお気軽にご連絡くださいでは本日もありがとうございました失礼します Thanks, everybody.